But as I got older and when I, I went to college, uh, I think some, somewhere along the line, I, I got introduced to Imam Pleman El Amin, who was working very closely with Imam Warfa D. Muhammad at the time. And uh, it was around 90, 93 or 94, somewhere around that, that time. I just graduated high school. I was 16 years old. And, um, and I think there was a concerted effort from the, the leaders in, in the community, the, in the broader sense, to find talent, people with promise that they could invest in, that they could you know, introduce. And uh, uh, Imam Pleman began to, uh, to, to, to do that for me. I don't know if it was because uh, he had uh, saw a promise in me or wanted to encourage something. Uh, or because the imam told him to, I don't know. What, I don't know because it, I saw it was it was kind of unique. It wasn't uh, it wasn't everybody getting getting to have this kind of uh, exposure and uh, accommodated meetings. So one time I had a meeting with Imam Muhammad that was facilitated at, at an airport with Imam uh, by Imam Pleman uh, Alami. I think it was in Los Angeles, California. I think, and I told the imam I asked certain questions. And these questions were on the back of some abuses that I experienced in trying to bring Imam Muhammad to my school mm. and uh, at my college. I was at college. And um, it was rough. I mean, it was a rough effort. And it, it, it was a type of effort that if you don't have a strong basis, like the one my father helped and my mother helped to provide for me and my siblings, then it could, it could really shake the foundation of one's faith. And so, uh, but... Oh, praise be to Allah, it didn't shake mine. And uh, I, I just, it just gave me more questions. And it started to, it, it started to bring into, into focus for me real clear critical questions that I needed to have answers for if I'm going to continue to give myself to an association of a perspective that was uh, in some measure abusive to me. And what I came out of that meeting for, with was a clear and unequivocal uh, sense of care and love. You know, the likes of which I, I don't think I ever experienced. And uh, Imam Muhammad, that was that exchange. He told me, in fact, if you, uh, you're not the only one that has these questions. He would always be a, a, a balancer. Even if you said something that was extraordinary. He said, wow, that's incredible. But somewhere not too far away from that part of the conversation, he would bring the uh, exaggeration of self-importance that had the propensity to emerge in one's mind or heart. He bring it back to a level ground by letting you know that you know you're common, and I'm common, and uh, there are others that have these questions. Would you facilitate a forum that I could um, address more young people? And uh, the 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 uh, I always had a, a sense of identity of interest, uh, just almost naturally, you know. It, maybe it's how I grew up. Maybe it's the the, the code of my my buddies, my friends. You know, you don't take what's not yours, and you don't, uh, even if it's casual, even if it's something that, that you have full rights to, you give the respect to, to, to that. that. That's the way I grew up with my friends, and that's something that was very, very core to Imam W.D. Muhammad's way of teaching and thinking. Um, as, you, as we all know, you know, that was something he wanted, he took very precise care about who owned what, uh, even with respect to the mind and with respect to the heart. Uh, as well as with respect to property. Um, so when, when, when uh, uh, I was thinking of a way, okay, how do I facilitate a conference? I think I'm 17 or 18 years old. And uh, at, at the time, the, the, the National Shore, we had a, a body of imams. And I looked at it as it's a protection for me if I have them, uh, you know, someone in that group to handle the money and to work with me to facilitate something I was, in, I was instructed to do. Because Imam Muhammad was clear, I'm telling you to do this. He was, he was very clear, almost extra clear <laughs> about that. And um, he said, you can do it how you see fit, but I'm telling you. So I thought about it. And I thought Imam Pleem and Al-Amin, who had uh, at the time was the executive, uh, was the Shura uh, convener. He was the head of the Shura convener. Uh, they call him the convener. And he was traveling frequently with Imam Warfa D. Muhammad. So I, I figured, well, what better way than to, than to both have the value of someone who's already established uh, working to, to collect the money and promote the event uh, and also, you know, not 
have some of the barriers or some of the, the, the things that, that, that wind up taking away from efforts, people thinking, what is your motive, et cetera. I had no zero desire to get material benefit from that. I, I wanted, uh, I just, I always had a, an idea that I could get material benefit. I want to know how do I manage my mind and my heart in the face of material benefit. Um, and I think a lot of people have that same, they, they go back and forth in their heart, in the, in the inverted heart, back and forth. And so Imam Pleem El Amin accepted, and we facilitated that meeting. Imam Muhammad said he would come, but he didn't come. He was in, he was in Damascus, Syria. And uh, when he got back, he gave me a call, and he said that uh, he wanted me to meet him in Lawnside, New Jersey. In the meantime, my, my, my personal life was um, kind of taken off and I, got a, I was about to graduate college and I got a, a job and uh, 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 Imam Muhammad basically said this is very important. He said there's nothing more important for our life and future than to embrace this opportunity and he described that opportunity as, as one to go and study in Damascus, Syria. And uh, so I did that for two years. And I think that um, some way Imam Muhammad knew. He, he visited the facility, and it, was, it, it, they weren't, it wasn't the best uh, accommodations in terms of luxury, like some of the other learning opportunities that are offered abroad. But it, 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 they were very modest accommodations. Some rooms have 40 beds, 40 bunk beds. Mm -hmm. And each bunk bed, it shows 80 people in one room. And, uh, and maybe five or six bathrooms or, or showers or something. And um, so, but we, it was a phenomenal experience and it placed, it placed the focus in the right, the right place, I think. And uh, there were a number, of, maybe about a hundred, uh, just, just about a hundred students that embraced that opportunity. And, uh, and now each one of them know how to go directly to the Quran for themselves in the original language that it was revealed in and extract uh, the, the, the guidance and meaning uh, of, of what Allah intended for human beings for themselves. And I think that that is a phenomenal uh, process and movement from the womb that, that originated this community.